the fabric one on the other side like if you're on a say a flap on a, on a bag when you put them together like that they they attract to each other and I suddenly thought that would be a good idea with the fabric that I was laying out so just to let you see an example I'll do it I'll show you a proper video but take this piece of fabric take this piece of paper this is the pattern and you've got on top of your fabric you take one of these they go underneath so what you do is when it's on the table you slide this on underneath you take the other one and you put it on the top like that and look at that the paper won't move and there they are the magnets you can see them and what's good about them is when I cut the fabric I'll be able to take them the, the the pattern will stay pinned or stay fixed to the pack to the to the fabric so I won't have any issues there so I'll carry on and I'll show you what it's like the nice thing about moving these magnets and having these magnets is you can move the fabric without having to unpin it so if I want to move that in I can move it in like that and then pull it out a bit more there and I don't have to unpin everything and similarly if I want to move that hood if I want to move this a bit more across I don't have to unpin I just pull gently and the magnets will come with it, with it. magnets will stay on the top and on the bottom and so I don't have to worry about them moving there we go We'll put one under there, I've got two here, one under there, and one on top. And you don't have to do the corners because it all lies nicely. And what is also good is I can pull the fabric along there, knowing that the magnets are going to stay in place. Push it that way. Look at that. Coming up, curling a bit there, but still staying in place like so so that i can start cutting i'm really taken by that whereas i've got a pin there and a pin there it's a bit awkward far better once you've cut it off with your two uh your four i've got four magnets on here i can put it together like that and i can take two of them off and reuse them elsewhere so i've got two there in fact i can take i've got the one there and i can take the other ones off and that is my piece held together not going to come off the paper another use for these magnets is when you're laying the fabric out and you want to match the folds together you can use a magnet to touch the corner here so if I put that there one magnet on one side one on the other then I know that that's going to stay in place and I can match these ends here and get them all to line up properly like that and what you can do is do even though it's on the fold you can put this on the other end because it adds a bit of weight to that piece there and then you know you know it's not going to move so I've got a, a magnet there and a magnet here and I could do the same at this end I could put one match one to there and then like that I know that I'm going to have it I'm not going to be messing around all the time, time trying to keep it in place. So one there, one there, there you go, and one on the other corner. And then we'll, we'll lay it out straight after that. Then the next one was because my eyesight is starting to go 72 and it's finally starting to go a little bit i'm always very good at threading uh, needles on my sewing machine but for some reason lately i'm really struggling to find that not to, i can see the hole i can see the end of the thread but i can't get the thread to go through the hole and so i have pulled out this gadget that i told i did a vlog about ages ago two or three years ago and it's this little gadget here it's a little plastic gadget with a hook on one side and that side is for threading your pin put threading your sewing needle onto your machine 
and this side is for threading your thread through the needle and there's actually a tiny 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 i don't know if you can see it there a tiny little blade with a it's actually got a little v in the end of it and you use that to thread the thread through the needle uh i'll, I'll do a little example to show you how it's used some people when i did the last the vlog the last time said they couldn't get it to work you have to be careful because if you bend that if that little piece of metal gets bent then it's not going to go straight straight it has to remain in a straight line in the middle and if you as long as you don't bend it it should work um this another one other people told me that apparently bernina always included this in their gadgets box so if bernina thinks it's a good tool then it's a, then it's worth getting a hold of not very expensive i think when you buy them you buy two or three in the packet and um i found that really really useful this little gadget uh it cut it's got um a white piece on here little one it's all in plastic white piece on here a little arrow on that side and if i turn it over there's an arrow on the other side so basically what that's telling you is when you put it towards the needle that's where the arrow is is the way that you have to put it against your needle then on the other side this has a little hole and that has a flat side on one end and a curved side on the other and the purpose of that is so that you can put your sewing needle into there to uh to for fitting onto your machine So I've threaded this up, but I've got my needle to thread. There's no thread in the needle, and normally I would use this to thread it, but unfortunately, for some reason, it's not picking up the thread. So this little gadget has worked out a treat for me. Through the Y, like that. In there, push, the, push it a little bit till you the metal is scraping along the ridge of that needle and then push it through there and as you push through it's pushing that thread through then gently you, you may have to hold that thread to stop it from being pulled back out or you can use this is where your pointy all comes in handy if, it, if you feel that it's going to be pulling itself out you keep a hold of that and pull it like that and then once you've got that you get your hook and you pull it right through I'll do that again to show you. Right, the thread is going into that little hook there. Right, then I put my thread through there and I get it against the needle. Now, before I push the metal, I've got I can feel it I can feel it scratching against that little ridge so I know I'm in the right place and then I push it through till I get to the bottom push the needle through can you see the loop and in case in case it pulls the loop out you can then get your needle and pull it a bit or use your hook I prefer to use this and pull it with my awl and that's my thread pulled through. So well worth having if your eyesight's going. Um, another one that I came across, this is, this is an old one of mine. Fis my, this one's Wilkinson Sword. But Fiskars have produced this as well. And this is for sharpening your scissors. It, I had... The other day I had accidentally tried to cut something. I was cutting some fabric and there was a pin in the fabric and I hadn't noticed. And when I cut it, cut it with the scissors, it caused a little bump on the blade and when every, everything I tried to cut after that wasn't working. So I've done a little video to show you how, this, how I use this to sharpen that, those scissors. These are all examples of the scissor cutters that Fiskar sells. The larger ones are slightly more expensive. They range from about 10 to 15 pounds. And the smaller ones are only a matter of a two to three pounds. These scissor sharpeners don't work with serrated edges, just the straight edges. And basically you push your scissors in through the gap 
and then you pull them out as if you're cutting the fabric. You squeeze the blade together. This is a slightly different version, not as uh, heavy, not as robust, but still usable. And uh, then you come to the smaller versions, which are little handheld ones, rather like the one that I've got, where you hold it between your thumb and your finger and you put your scissors in and sharpen it in the same way. This is one of my Fiskars pair of scissors and as I'm cutting I can feel a little uh, as if something is not right and when I look at the blade I don't know if you can see if I put my finger behind there can you see what's happened there I must have caught some pins when I was cutting fabric out and I've got little some little notches there so I need to get rid of those little notches because that's what's stopping the fabric from stopping the scissors from cutting the fabric properly. And I've just come across this. Now there are lots of ways you can sharpen your knife. I did a, a vlog about how to sharpen them, but I found this in my drawer, and it's basically it's a Wilkinson sword. I don't know if they make anything anymore, but you can get them from Friskars. And basically, it's four rods that are in different angles and then you push your scissors through there you hold this part like this and you push your scissors through and you run it along the edge and it sharpens the scissors blade so you can see I've already been using it let me try it so if I take these scissors and I basically run them through there like that and then I I push them together to the edge and then I force them through like that. I should turn you around this way. Can you see that? I'm forcing it through like that. I put these together like that and then I force them through. I'm basically trying to keep them shut as I'm pushing them away from myself. And because those notches are right here, I've got to get well in, so I'm going to go right up to there. And you do it for a few times, and I can still... That's an indication that I still have something on there that's just can you hear that so this is possibly not going to work very well this way but there's another way you can do it you can open your scissors up be careful you don't cut yourself on there and pull it this way and then do the other side Let's try that. That's better. So if I get some fabric and I try to cut it, I have a little piece of fabric here that I'm going to cut in a straight line. I don't know if you can see here. Oh, that's far, far better. I'm not feeling any crunches when I do it. So I've actually almost certainly got rid of those notches and let's see if I can see them. They are still there. I don't know if you can see them there. Can you see them? They are still there. If I turn it around that way, you might just see them there. But they're a lot better. So if I keep doing this, then I might eventually get rid of... The other way, as I've said, is to use your stone, which I have, stone like this, and which is the one that's got the marks on. The marks are on, on this one. So I need to run this 
in the line of the in the angle of the that blade but if I I'll use this cloth to wipe it and if I look at it now you can't I can't see I can't see any not oh I can just see very very gently a couple of little marks there so let's see if I can do that some more And those marks have completely, let's wipe this a bit with that. The marks have gone completely. I can't see them at all. And if I go like that, I should be able to, oh, look at this. Absolutely wonderful. There you go. Um, And fris Fiskars have got some newer versions of these which are equally as good and uh, I'll put pictures up there to let you see what they are like they and I'll put the prices to give you an idea on the prices if you want to get I, and I can also put a list down below I'll put a link down below so you can see where you can get them from and that is for sharpening your scissors <music> then I came across these and I bought these, they cost £1.45 and they're called Pony Black Sharps. Pony Black Sharps. £1.45 they cost me. I can't remember who did I get them from. They were from, I got them from Cheap Fabrics. Hand sewing needles. And the thing about them is they're for people with not very good eyesight. So I'll get it out and let you see. This particular packet has a size 9, a size 5 to 7, a size 6 and a size 8. So there you go. I'll let you see what they are. They're, they are needles, but they're dip needles with a difference. Let me take it off here to show you. There. Can you see that? Half of them are white, the top half is white and the bottom half is black. And the reason for that is that with them being white on the top, you can, yes, people who have not very good eyesight can see the hole better. So it's easier to thread. Now let me see if I can do that. If I take some thread, pull it out of my machine and cut some off. And as I say, my eyesight's not doing so well, but I'm putting black thread into there. And because it's got a white hole, it's amazing. Yes, it's gone straight through. I can see that hole. Can you see? Oops, there. You can see the hole really well. If I try to do that on a silver one, which I have here. If I try to do that on a silver one, look at the difference. You can't really see the hole on the silver one very well. Turn that that way. They're both pointing the same way. But can you see how this, the white one is standing out more? I'm not sure if I'll... And see if I can do the... The silver one is not very good. I'm getting there. I've got it through. Oh no, I haven't there i've managed to get through the silver one but let's see how much how quickly i can do the white one white one i can see immediately whoa that is a big difference i've i've immediately threaded it and the thing about the black part is it is it's not nickel plated so anybody who has some allergy to nickel plating will not get that allergy with that and that's it's black i think it's tempered steel or something which makes it black but i definitely would recommend these little needles to you other one um you a lot of you a lot of vloggers have told you about this one these these pins which have a little swollen into them so you can grab them and they're a lot easier to grab if you haven't got very good um 
fingers as you get older that's another good one and i'll put a link down for those there the next gadget i didn't buy because i've got tons of these of of these and i don't have a need for it myself but i thought it was very good for those of you who have problems uh problems with your hands and this was a stitch and picker but the stitch and picker was a one like this i'll put a video up of it It basically sucks to the tabletop and then you bring your fabric towards it and it, you cut it pulling the fabric towards you and it's in such a way that what I have told you about these stitch unpickers is when you unpick anything you have the bead bit underneath and the point bit on the top and this is set in such a way the beads underneath and the points on the top and when you put your fabric in like that you actually pull it this way and it means you don't have to manipulate this this thing in your hand the video shows it really well of how it unpicks and that is absolutely marvelous for people who have arthritic hands who want who have to unpick something that is really good i think the price is not cheap um Offhand, I can't remember, but I'll put the price up there to let you see what it is. But if you have difficulty with your hands and you want to sew, that is well worth getting. So I hope you enjoyed that. Those are all gadgets, both for people who have difficulty with sewing with their hands and also just great gadgets. You will, I'm sure you'll find that at least with one of them that you will, they will come in handy. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you and catch you next time.